Hey, Fed Heads. Welcome to another episode of Sharing Our Pairings. This is episode 24, Smoking Monk Hefeweizen. That's the best German I'm going to be doing all night. Uh, I don't know if I can repeat that. I'm your host, John, the Cigar Surgeon. You're here live on Cigar Federation. Thanks very much for our listeners around the world. Thanks very much for our podcast listeners. Thanks very much for the AFRN listeners who occasionally tune in, hopefully tune in to Sharing Our Pairings. I'm here with my guest host, my normal co-host, Robbie Ress. Rob, there, there's nothing. There's nothing guest about. There's me. no guest about it. No, no, I'm I'm uh, I'm in it for the long haul, man. I'm, I'm in it to win it, or you know, whatever. Um, I'm just happy to be here. It's uh, the, the sun's shining, the birds are chirping, we're smoking some uh, some smoking monk hefeweizen, and Could I've got some bursts. I've got three glorious beers that I'm ready to dive into. You saying you saying is eighty degrees there? Ish, ish. Yep, that's give or take. Um, that's, that's great weather for half of ice. It's yeah, it is. It's it's a little bit scurry that we have it uh, in the beginning of March, and it's been like this since the beginning of. But you know, whatever, we'll roll with it. If we have to borrow water from you guys, we'll borrow it. Yep, truck it on down, or we'll steal it. So. <clears throat> Just as a amusing anecdote, your uh, your host failed to put the um, video link up on the uh, website. So <laughs> that's kind of funny. Is uh, so okay? So I'll I'll uh, I'll fill while you're um, while you're doing that. I did actually did some uh, pairings this past weekend. Um, <clears throat> luckily, I have something to talk about. Uh, I hung out with um, Aaron and June from Blind Man's Puff, and we did some beer tasting. And June, uh, God bless him, brought a ton of beers, and Aaron brought a ton of beers. I showed up with, like, three, and we, we – mine were, like, pity beers. We drank mine just, you know, because I brought them, so let's drink them. But um, we, I'm going to go through some of these beers that, uh, that I was lucky enough to drink here. We'll start, this is kind of the order that we went in. Um, we started off with – uh, Belching Beaver Peanut Butter Milk Stout, and it, that is you, that is a lot of words. If you oh man, if you can get your hands on this, it was so expletive deleted good. Um, I, I smoked uh, the first cigar I smoked was a uh, Viaje Satori 2012, and that's that cigar is really sweet to me. There's it's got a little bit of spice to it, but not a ton. But it's mainly its main component is that chocolate sweetness. And pairing it with that, uh, the peanut butter milk stout uh, from Belching Beaver, man, that was amazing. Um, after that, went with the uh, the 1050, the Imperial Stout, which I know that you've had while we've been on the show. Yeah, um, it's outstanding. It, uh, you know, it's actually I'm looking here at my Untapped, and it gives me all the all the specs on it. That Belching Beaver milk stout's 5.3 percent, doesn't give me the IBUs. Um, the 1050 was 10.5 percent uh, alcohol. By volume, 98. I moved on to the Eclipse uh, Woodford Reserve uh, Stout from uh, 5050 Brewing. Well, you know they like you if they're pouring an Eclipse. That is an expensive beer. And it's, you know, it's, it, it is. June did a really nice job of, of hooking it up. And uh, and I asked him, I was like, how do you get all this stuff? He's like, I have beer mules. So he's got people around the country who get beer from him. But I will say that 5050 Brewing is right up the road there in Tracy. So um, that's actually really close. Um, and so that was the Woodford Reserve from 2014, 11.9% alcohol by volume. So these, things, these were freaking heaters, man. Um, then uh, this is one of the ones that I brought was the, the huge Archer Imperial Stout uh, from uh, Anderson Valley. And that is in a uh, – it's a Russian Imperial Stout, and it's, it, it is from, not fermented. It's uh, – it, it's just, it does it spend some time in bourbon barrels, and they are uh, wild turkey bourbon barrels. So that was actually pretty good. Uh, that one's 13.5%. You can see Holy the trend. Crap, man. Um, <clears throat> at this point, I switched cigars. I moved over to an Oliva V, um, uh, Oliva V uh, Salamone is what I was smoking. Then we jumped into uh, Bourbon County uh, from Goose Island. It was a 2014, 14.4% alcohol by volume. I mean, were you still conscious at this point? Yeah, well, it was it was three of us, and so we were all sharing them. And I was actually fine. I ended up driving home. I was okay. Uh, I mean, this was over five hours. 
and, and we also and uh, Aaron was um, smoking some ribs, and so we uh, we had some food to eat and everything. Then the last one that I had was the the Abyss 2013 from Deschutes. Uh, that one was oh, also really that. good, uh, 11% alcohol. But that Bourbon County man, people go nuts for that stuff. Wait in line for it and everything from Goose Island, and that beer will knock your teeth out. Yep. It and I can't say I've had the pleasure because, you know, <clears throat> it's impossible to get a hold of and whatever. So maybe mm. someday I'll see it, but whatever. That was the first time I had seen it. And it's so funny. All these beers were pouring out of uh, these 22-ounce bottles, the big bottles, you know. And, and they bring out the uh, the Bourbon County. And it's like in this little baby bottle. And it's like, wow, that's so <laughs> tiny. It's cute. But it's in a regular 12-ounce bottle. But uh, anyway, so that was some of the stuff that I got into this weekend. I assume you got the video going now so we can move on. But... Yeah, I got my typing going. This is what happens when we take two weeks between shows is, you know, I get complacent and the podcast listeners are like, I don't care. I'm listening to the podcast. He obviously took care of that because he cares about his podcast listeners, but throws his live listeners under the bus because, you know, that's just how we roll here at sharingourpairingcigarfederation.com. Indeed. Indeed. So today we're getting, <clears throat> was our second to last show. Second to last show. The uh, Smoky Monk, we're, we're going to talk about the Hefeweizen. Um... I've got three beers. They're in a stunning turn of events, all German. Um, and, you know, it's, I went with strict Hefeweizen in the title. I didn't just grab a regular wheat beer. I grabbed all Hefeweizens. They had, they had a ton of wheat beers, the wheat beer section, but mm -hmm. none of them were really called Hefeweizens. And I'm thinking, you know, eh, they all seem to have some sort of fruit element to them. There was a tangerine and all this other nonsense. Which, I mean, maybe sound kind of refreshing, but to me it didn't sound very tasty. So I just stuck with OG, straight-up German, Hofbrau, Weissenbrau, lots of brows and umlauts, and, uh, <laughs> and, and, just, and just went for it. So I'm ready to get started. The Germans are coming, and we'll talk about, um, you know, what's the difference between some of the white beers, some of the wheat beers, some of the Weiss beers, Bavarian style versus German style, because there's, there's actually a ton of history there. Um, and I've, interestingly enough, when I looked at your lineup, I was like, two of the three beers you picked, I've probably been drinking on a regular basis for 10 years because they're delicious. <laughs> and um, it was an easy pick for me because two of the three beers I picked up, I've, like, I literally went to the shelf and I said, guys, like, hey, do you need a hand? Because at Kensington Wine Market, they're super helpful guys. They're always like, hey, do you need some advice? Do you need some help? I said, no, I actually have this because for a change, I actually know what beer I need to pick out and I know what the Weiss beers are because I like <laughs> I drink these all the time in the summertime. Not really winter beers, but in the summertime, piece of cake. Yeah, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> I, uh, I picked all these up at my local BevMo and no one asked me if I needed any help because it was like the middle of the day and they were stocking and all kinds of stuff. But I, um, <clears throat> I found everything I was looking for. I pulled up your uh, photo on the on my trusty Cigar Federation app, which is now available, by the way. Um, yeah, you can get that on your uh, your iPhone and Android. Wait a minute, uh, on <laughs> iPhone and Android, Rob? Correct. That's crazy. It's a everybody can download it. Where would I go to download that if I had an Apple? <laughs> <laughs> you would uh, you would just pull up a little app store on your phone and type in Cigar Federation and pop up. Um, if you don't, it doesn't matter if you do Cigar Federation as one word or space it out. Don't put CigarFederation.com because then it won't pop up, but otherwise it will. Um, and I think we have an update coming pretty soon um, to both uh, to both versions as well. It's, it's some, a couple of uh, things that have been fixed. So yeah, uh, just got pushed to Android, I think. Oh, okay, good. Um, yeah, we've been having some some issues with a couple of different things. So anyway, um, so I pulled that up on the app to make sure that we didn't double up because. When I'm looking at these German beers, all of them look the same to me. I mean, this is, I'll, I'll start with, I mean, I'm starting with the Hofbrau München, which it's in Munich. I, I think that's what München is, mm -hmm. Munich. Um, all the labels kind of look like that. Yep. There's a picture of a house in the middle. There's <laughs> there's some letters with the crown and, <laughs> and some gold leaf writing. Like, that's it. They all kind of look the same. Very so traditional. I, exact, very traditional. It's a nicer way to put it. Uh, I had to pull up yours and make sure that we weren't doubling up, but I think that we we managed to not do so. Um, since I already started, kind of, I'll, uh, I guess I'll just jump in and start talking about this one. Roll right in. 
Um, yeah, this is from uh, Hofbrau München, um, which has been around like forever. Um, established in 1589, so they've kind of got it down. 5.1 alcohol percent alcohol by volume. Um, all of these are brewed according to the German purity laws, which I know you're going to get into at some point. Um, I, th there's not a lot of uh, not a lot of information on their websites. Um, no. Uh, it's, you know, it's, they talk about how it's just a special kind of beer. What could be more pleasurable than quenching your thirst with a deliciously yeasty Weiss beer, which is the Weiss beer and the Hefeweizen are the same thing, at least for this company, because Weiss beer literally is translated into wheat beer. Um, or white beer. And, or, or white. Uh, uh, and uh, savoring the tingling, fizzy sensation in your mouth. <laughs> With an alcohol content of around 5.1% alcohol by volume, it's pure, refreshing enjoyment. Um, they have some good photos on here, but, uh, you know, not a ton of information. They make a bunch of different beers. Uh, I hear they're actually their Oktoberfest is quite tasty. Um, so that's really all the information I've got on it. Again, it is Hofbrau München. München? Is that how you'd say it? I'm not good with umlauts. Um, you know, my German pronunciation is very, very basic, so I think it's München, yeah. And as you can see, it's what you'd expect a, you know, traditional uh, Hefeweizen look like. It's It's got a, a golden uh, yellow hue to it. It's a little bit cloudy in there because of the, the way that it is fermented. There's still uh, active yeast inside the bottle. Top fermented uh, zone. So it's, uh, yeah, you can get into much more detail than that. I kind of jumped you, but uh, anyway, that's what I'm working on. So go ahead. We got no rules here on sharing our pairings. So, um, because I like to rock the boat, and that's just the way I roll, I have gone with a Japanese. Uh, it is more of a Bavarian style white beer, and I'll talk a little bit about that as we go on. Um, this is a brewery called Kyushi, and I'm sure I said that terribly because I can't speak Japanese. Uh, Kyushi Brewery. It's a Hitachino Nest. Um, like I said, it's Bavarian style. Uh, I'll get into that in a minute. But same, same as yours. I mean. We're expecting um, some some very th sort of effervescent, cloudy character to this, and that's uh, as a result of the style of the brewing and the way in which the yeast is added and some of the technique that it's created. A little bit about Kyushi, and if you want to learn about them, you can go to the website. It's kodawari.cc, or just uh, go to our show page and look up Kyushi and Google them. So first uh, hit that comes up on Google. The uh, brewery is 190 years old, um, so originally they were just making uh, sake, which of course is you know big in Japan. They were established in 1823 um, by a gentleman named Kuishi Gihai, um, so it makes sense that it would be named after the founder. Uh, in 1950, uh, <clears throat> they found that they sort of were just predominantly only focused on sake, and they really didn't start uh, brewing until 1996, so technically even though they're an old um, you know, I guess you'd call it a distillery. Uh, they only really started brewing in 1996. Um, they added a dis dis uh, additional distillation facility in 2003 to get rid of some of the additional um, byproducts they're making to try and be more environmentally friendly, which I thought was kind of cool. Uh, anyways, so this is top fermented, and what does that mean, top fermented? Well. Top fermentation is a is a big aspect of of vice beers or wheat beers or white beers, and what that means is that you're adding um, an active yeast to the top of the beer to add effervescent quality to the beer. So there's there's two types of yeast you could do. You could do a bottom yeast, which is used for a lager, um, or you could use the top yeast. Now we'll get into the sort of German purity laws and the beer laws later, but um, they create a, a foam at the top of the wort. Uh, and that's really the, one of the big components of what creates a Weiss beer. So that's the way you get the sort of big foaming head. Um, the cloudy nature of it is is from this active yeast. So this is, you know, in that style, it's top fermented. Um, because it's Bavarian style, not uh, German style, it has coriander, orange peel, and nutmeg. Uh, they use lager malts and wheat malts, uh, pearl uh, hops, Styrene, styrene hops and gold, styrene or golding hops. I don't know hops at all. Somebody hopefully can correct me as we go. <laughs> and then a wonderful word I learned today, which is adjuncts. So it has flaked wheat, flake barley, coriander, nutmeg, orange peel, and orange juice. 
and without getting too far into it, adjuncts are unmalted grains or assist, uh, assisting grain pro um, products that are being used in the brewing process that are not the initial, um, so they're not the initial malt, uh, not the initial uh, wheat, not the initial water. So they're basically an additive, if you will, but they call it an adjunct. And it, you know, in this case, if it's Bavarian style, you're looking to add additional character to the beer that's not otherwise there from the base products you're baking the beer out of. It has an original gravity of 1.055. If you've been paying attention to our earlier shows, and I know you have, that means it has an ABV of 5.5% and an IBU of 13, which makes it very, very low. And it is, um, it's tasty. It's fresh. You know, it's it's uh, it's funny. You say adjunct, and that just sounds like a like a grammatical term to me. Like, it, it's the part of a sentence or something I add on to the end of a word. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, when I'm really enjoying this pairing, the uh, the cigar is really mild. Uh, it's got some some flavors to it. It's got some vanilla. There's a little bit of cherry in there. Some almond type notes. You guys know the flavoring that I'm talking about. Uh, that flavor style that I'm talking about. Um, Again, don't know if they're infused or not. I mean, John and I both have a, a theory, and I don't know if he might get into it a little bit later. Um, <clears throat> but the pairing with this beer is it's it's got a very the beer in and of itself light, crisp, has some citrus notes to it. When I pair the two, I get a really strong van, um, banana flavor. Interesting. Which is very very weird, and it, it's it's right up front. <clears throat> it's right when you know I take a sip. It's right when it hits the tongue. And it dissipates quickly, but I taste it right up front. And then it, it kind of creams out a little bit. I got some creamy citrus notes afterwards. The pairing is really, really nice for <clears throat> spring. I really, well, the, I, I'm enjoying it. Sorry. The, the Hitachino Nest for me, because it does have that, like I can definitely get the nutmeg and coriander out of it, a little bit of the citrus characters. And for me, it's bringing a lot more out of the cigar. I think we were talking a little bit before the show, and I started drinking before the show because I was thirsty. And that's how I roll here on sharing our pairings. Uh, I was getting a lot of vanilla, and, and we were talking about a lot of cherry, which leads me to believe, because I, I, I firmly believe that these are not, in fact, infused, and that's what we've been told repeatedly, they're not infused, that they're using some sort of aromatic and or black tobacco in the cigar. It's the only explanation I can come up with for where I'm getting a vanilla cherry note out of the cigar. And when I, when I nosed uh, the foot of this, I mean, it was absolutely an aromatic pipe tobacco uh, scent, and it's unmistakable. If you've ever cracked a tin of, of aromatic tobacco, you know what I'm talking about. I mean, it's just a big, bold flavor, and then you go to taste it, and it's a lot more subtle than what you're getting off the nose, and that, that's absolutely what I got off the uh, Smoking Monk of Esteli Hefeweizen. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I didn't really... No, I'm not going to disagree with you. I just I didn't get that blast of... Of, uh, of smell to it when I took a sniff of the wrapper. You can smell a little bit that smells different, but uh, to me it wasn't the same as the stout. The stout was very clear that there was something going on there. Uh, with this, I taste it more than I smelled it. Um, when I clipped the cap, and actually, I don't even have to tell you guys this, but I'm going to. I, I clipped the entire cap off the first one. I don't know what the hell I was doing. I clipped the whole thing off and it just started to unravel. Like a total rookie mistake. But I feel better. It's off my conscience. I came clean. Uh, so with the second one that I clipped, and I clipped it much better, as you can see, right there across the top. Um, I, I think the other ones had a really small cap on it. I don't know. It was weird. Because I didn't cut that much, but the whole cap came off. And uh, anyway, um, on the, the cold draw was when I could really taste it. And I get that vanilla, mild cherry, almond type notes. <clears throat> it, was, uh, it was very, very tasty. I really enjoy it. And when once you light it up, you can kind of taste that, that aromatic type tobacco essence to it. Um, but I, I like it. I, You know, it's funny. The two that I thought, the two shows I thought that were going to be the ones that I didn't like are turning out to be the ones I like the most. So far, I mean, I've only done uh, one pairing here, but I'm really enjoying the way that this is, it's a really mild cigar, but it's it, it pairs really nicely with that beer. I mean, this to me is the perfect thing. Cause when I go fishing, I don't really drink coffee in the morning. I'm drinking beer. I mean, as soon as I get, I've got a, at least one beer open by the time I get a line in the water. So this to me is like I'm going fishing in the spring with, uh, you know, with some buddies with my dad or whatever, and, and, you know, we're kind of sitting out, maybe in a boat, maybe just off the shore. But this would be a nice spring morning 
camping, hanging out. I, I would I would get uh, I would get some enjoyment out of that for sure. Yeah, and I, I would concur. And maybe we should have called the show "Pairing Dummies" instead of uh, you know sharing our pairings. But um, <laughs> just a reminder to our audience out there: you are listening to. Sharing Our Pairings, Episode 24, Smoking Monk of Esteli Hefeweizen, sponsored by Cigar.com, broadcast live around the world. Broadcast to our podcast listeners. Check it out. If you haven't already, download our Cigar Federation app for both Android and for Apple. Check it out, iTunes Store or Play Google Store. Thanks very much for tuning in. Appreciate your guys' support. If you haven't already, go to our YouTube page, like our video, because we need those likes, and make sure to subscribe to get our new content. So we're talking about Smoky Monk half of ice, and we're pairing with some half of ice and ice beers. They're tasty. They're good. I wish it was a little bit warmer up here, but it's pretty good. <laughs> we're, we're pairing with some wheat beers, and, and they're tasty. No, I I, I don't want to drone on and on about it, but <clears throat> I really do like this first pairing. The cigar, you know, I'm getting some mild earthy notes from it. Um, it cedar, you know, a little bit, maybe some almond-type flavors in there. Not a ton of flavor from the cigar on its own, but again, these weren't made to be smoked on their own. Um, when you pair it with the cigar, or with the with the beer, I get a lot of citrus coming from both sides. Uh, like I said, that, that interesting banana flavor right up front, I'm curious to see if that carries along um, with the next two beers that we're, uh, we're going to try out, but I wasn't expecting that banana flavor, and I'm getting it on every sip, so I don't know, maybe I'm I don't know, maybe there's something wrong with me, but I'm definitely tasting it, and uh, I'd be curious to see if someone else tried out this exact pairing and had that same experience. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if that's as a result of the yeast they're using in this. I mean, you, a lot of cases, <clears throat> so maybe we can get into more of the technical aspects. Um, in a lot of cases, especially for uh, a German vice beer, they're doing what's called um, a bottle prep. Um, so, and and there's a there's a whole technical aspect of this that, you know, is way above my head, or a uh, bottle condition, pardon me. So essentially what they do is they'll bottle the beer and they'll add fresh unfermented beer to top it off. And what that does is it kicks off a, essentially another um, another fermentation in the bottle. So what happens is you get a, a greater carbon dioxide generation, even though, again, you've, you've sort of added the completed product, you're getting more CO2 so you add a blast of effervescence to the bottle that sort of is fresh in there uh, for when you open it. And I think part of the reason they do that is because CO2 is, a, is an excellent preservative, but also because, in, and you can see this with this pour, I mean, look at that, right? That is, that is just a huge amount of thick, foamy effervescence, right? It's a huge heat. It's a huge heat. Wait, I shouldn't be doing Scottish. I should be doing German. Yes, a very nice heat you got there. Yeah, you should not pour the beer like this. Very bad. Very, very bad. You are very Canadian. We need to teach you how to pour the beer. You pour it very badly. Um, mm. But, but it's yeah, the active yeast is, is getting that effervescence. And, and I mean, I think that's what you're looking for when you're drinking a, a, wee, a vice beer. For me, in the summertime, is I'm looking for something to uh, wet my palate, you know, uh, quench my thirst. I'm looking for that, that, that fresh light quality. I'm not drinking these 10% stouts in the summertime. I'm not <laughs> drinking motor oil. I want something fresh and delicious and light. Yeah, this is, uh, you know, I'm sitting here thinking about this, and I'm, I'm looking at, the, I'm studying the bottle, and I'm, I'm trying to remember what I paid for it. Um, I mean, is it one pint, nine ounces? I don't know what that translates to in, in uh, ounces. Um, <clears throat> I think it's 22. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, these were all in the two to three dollar range. Excuse me. So that's um, and the, with the effervescence, you do get a little bit of the the burping going on. So I do apologize for that. Um, but I'm gonna I'm, I'll be revisiting this. I, I know that a lot of these were available in six packs and twelve packs, and um, I do like wheat beers. I I don't really track them down this time of year uh, unless it's some kind of spiced wheat. There's some Christmas wheats out there that you'll pick up that have some spices and things. This is a little bit different for me. Um, but this is definitely something going into the summer that there's going to be some of these in my uh, in my beer fridge for sure. Yeah, and I think I mean you're looking to pair any Connecticut shade wrapper with um, with a beer. You're looking to pair it with something light. Some a vice beer is is a really good choice because it, it does have that effervescence. It is very quench thirst quenching. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, it's a natural pairing. Yeah, and I could see it actually, since we're roaming around the topic, uh, I could see it going well with some of the pipe uh, tobaccos that I've smoked. Um, I don't know how often during the summer I'm going to be sitting out with a pipe, um, you know, sipping on uh, Hefeweizen, but as I've been uh, going through the pipe journey, I haven't really been doing any pairing with it. Um, I've just been checking out the different uh, different styles of pipe tobacco and seeing what I enjoy, seeing what I like, seeing what I don't like, trying to figure out how to keep it lit and that kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> but I've, in the back of my mind, I've been thinking, what would I want to pair um, with some of these? And I'm thinking, I don't really want to pair with anything too big because it's going to run over a lot of these flavors, especially in the, the lighter aromatic stuff. Um, <clears throat> but I can see these particular beers because a lot of the, the light aromatic stuff that I'm smoking has a very similar smoke quality to this, flavor, quality, and texture. Very similar, so uh, I could see that being an interesting little pairing as well. I think there's, um, I mean, I haven't, I haven't, unfortunately, I'm a super pipe dummy, so I haven't really had a chance to do a lot of the pipe smoking yet, just a little bit. And I think, to me, one of the things I really like about uh, a half of icing is, again, that effervescence quality is is a great counter to um, a, a pipe smoke, which might be overpowering your your palate, might be overpowering your mouth. Um, and I think it's it's a palate refresher. So you take a draw of the pipe, you know, you sit back, enjoy the smoke, and then have a little sip of beer, and and, and the the effervescence is going to keep your keep your palate going. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I, I will say the uh, the aroma that's coming off of this is is reminiscent of yeah. uh, of some pipe tobacco, and it's 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 actually quite pleasing. Um, <clears throat> this is the kind of thing that if I'm smoking this, my wife would come out and hang out with me. That's for sure. Um, you want to move on to our beer number two here? Beer number dos, or in this case, uh, beer number dry. Yeah, whatever. I'll, I'll, let, I'll leave the German to you, man. Yeah. Um, I'll go uh, I'll go first. Um, the the second one that I picked up was uh, Erdinger. Is that how you say it? Erdinger, yeah, that's how you say it. Erdinger. Uh, Erdinger Hefeweizen. Um, all natural, bottle fermented. Like all of these, again, uh, we talked. Uh, they claim that this is the world's number one Hefeweizen. I I don't know if that's true or not. To be uh, fair, I love Erdinger. I love all the beers that Erdinger brings out. I drink their Dunkel. I drink their Weiss beer. They make good beer. Um, they do give you a nice thing on the back here. It says uh, best before date, which I don't see on uh, on the Hofbrau. Um <clears throat> It's uh, best before July of 2015, so I, I got in there pretty good. Um, pull up their website. They've got a little more information. 5.3 percent alcohol by volume. Uh, the original wort that we've talked about a little bit, 12.6 um, percent, I think that is. Um, it's calories, but they're in weird numbers, and I'm not going to get into per 100 milliliters. I don't even know what 100 milliliters are. Um, Very small it, enough. Yeah, they don't. Uh, you know, they just it's it's some flowery uh, some flowery writing about the particular beer. Um, I was uh, I was drawn to this one because I saw that it was uh, one of the one of the only Hefeweizen that they Hefeweizen that they had in the in the store that was out of stock, and the the 1.9 uh, 1.9 fluid ounce bottles like the one that I picked up was out of stock. The six packs were out of stock. The twelve packs were out of stock. Uh, if they had 12 packs, I don't know. It was just one area. Um, <clears throat> but everything was gone, so I asked somebody, and they had some more in the back. So I figured, since it's all out of stock, that must be a good thing. Um, that was why I picked it up. I'd never heard of the company before. Um, didn't know much about it, and I still really don't know much about it other than it's 5.3% alcohol by volume. So it's a little bit stronger but than the last one, but we're talking about 0.2%, so I'm not too worried about it. But a <clears throat> little bit darker in color. It doesn't really come across uh, on the video there because you're getting a lot of that that uh, ambient light, but um, still has the cloudy appearance to it. Um, a little bit darker than the last one, which is why I, I had it second. I didn't really have anything else to base these on. I hadn't tasted them beforehand. I should have, but I didn't. Um, so this will be my first uh, my first shot at the, uh, the Erding Erdinger? Erdinger. Erdinger. Okay, so I'm going to give it a shot. While you do that, I'm going to do some fill. I'm, I'm enjoying my Weihenstefiner Hefeweiss beer. And uh, this is what it looks like. So you can see it's very similar to a lot of the bottle art and design that you've already held up. Um, this is from Weihen Stefan out of um, Freising, Bavaria. 
Um, and it's I don't I don't know how your drink is going. I'll let you finish talking about your beer, but uh, it, it is very yeasty. Like like this is like drinking uh, fresh bread in a glass. That's that's how I would describe this so far. Fresh bread. I do like bread. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, I didn't. Uh, Erdinger is is from Erding, Germany. So mm -hmm. there you go. Uh, and that makes a lot of sense. Um, I've only been able to take one sip, <clears throat> so I'm gonna I'm gonna try to take a few more before I really get too far into what I'm tasting here. Well, and I will keep yapping away. So a little bit about the brewery, which I'm not gonna try and spell for you because it is German, and my German is uh, you know weak. Okay like all of my second languages. I speak English and I speak bad languages. It is one of the oldest breweries I've come across. It was founded in 1040. That is correct. That is, uh, for those keeping track, almost a thousand years ago. That is a long time. That um, falls under the category of hella old. That's, that's hella old. So, you know, they probably know what they're doing. Um, as I said, they're... they're uh, they come from the name of the brewery comes from the actual hill that it was on in Freising. Um, they've been taken over since then by the Bavarian State Brewery, so they're state owned. Um, Bahia Stefan was actually the uh, it was actually a monastery brewery, which makes sense because I think back then only monasteries were doing brewing. Um, and there's Benedictine monks who are famous around the world for doing a lot of brewing. They do a lot of abbey ales and that kind of thing. Uh, but again, it's owned by the Bavarian government now, state owned. Uh, my original wort, very similar to the Erdinger, it's 12.7%. Uh, uh, IBUs or bitter values is only 14. So again, we're talking about beers that are very, very light, very refreshing, and an ABV of 5.4. So this, again, it's it's intended to be a light, effervescent beer that's refreshing. You're not supposed to t you're not supposed to shotgun these. They're intended to be a nice, <laughs> delicious, refreshing beer that you drink on a patio somewhere when it's hot out. I mean, shotgun. that's shotgun, shot, shot, shot. I think it's it's safe to say that no beer that we ever talk about on this show is meant to be shotgun. That's a fair point, Rob. <laughs> so this is just a standing no shotgun rule. No shotgun rule. So, I mean, my beer has a very similar consistency to yours. We're, we're going from, um, certainly my first beer from the, the Hidachino Nest was, was dark, or cloudy, I should say. This is much, like, it's almost got an orange color to it. It's very thick. You cannot really see through this. I mean, there's some backlight, but you really can't see through this. And again, that's because of the top fermentation adding a lot of uh, cloudiness from the yeast. Yeah, I think the uh, the beers that we're sipping on now are, are very, very similar. Um when you say that yours is very yeasty, it's like bread in a bottle. I'm kind of getting that same. It's more of a yeasty texture than flavor for me. Um, <clears throat> very, it's 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 thick. Uh, not thick. Well, thick isn't the right term. It, it's it's uh, it kind of coats the mouthfeel is is thick. Yeah, it's a thick mouthfeel. Absolutely. Um, it's and it's almost creamy in uh, creamy creamy in, uh, in texture and it's the flavors on this one are a bit more muted. I'm not getting as much. Uh, from it, when I took the first few sips, I was getting that banana flavor again, but it's it's dissipated since. Um, with the Hofbrau, I was getting that weird banana note, but I was also getting that uh, that uh, some citrusy notes as well. Uh, with the Erdinger, I'm, I'm getting more of just a very basic beer flavor, if that makes any sense. Um, it's a little bit more, it's a little bit boring to be honest, uh, but it does highlight the cigar a little bit. Um, there's there's more flavor coming from the cigar. I'm getting more of that that slight earth notes from there, that more of that cedar from it, more of that uh, the, the almond tones from there as well. But uh, boring isn't the right term because that's not fair. It's, it's not it's it's not a boring beer. It's not bad. It's not um, super complex. <clears throat> but yeah, it just it's not it's not a ton of complexity. It's I'm it's all right. I'm sitting on the patio. I'm down at spring training and I'm watching uh, some baseball on the lawn or something. And it's a perfect beer for that. Uh, <clears throat> I felt like the Hofbrau had a bit more. Uh, uh, complexity of flavor, more depth of flavor to it, a little bit more nuance to it. Um, but I like the mouthfeel of this a little bit better. It's got that nice, you can take big sips of it, if that makes sense. Like when I'm taking a sip, I want to take a big gulp for whatever yeah. reason. Yeah, I would I would agree. And, 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 you know, it's not that we're not talking about stuff. We're talking about a beer that's intended to be refreshing and tasty. Yeah. And it is what it is. It's not, it's not, you know, we're pairing with a very light cigar because the light cigar is going with the light beer. It's not because we're, we're lacking complexity overall. It's just because what we're looking for is not 
it's just it's not going to blow you away with you're not going to be sitting here for 15 minutes talking about 20 different flavors you taste that's not that's not what it is yeah it's um, it's a very very different uh, a very different experience than <clears throat> some of the beers we've had in the past but <clears throat> given the uh, the profile of the cigar the the flavor makeup um, the pairings are nice i mean even with this this Erdinger, which to me doesn't have like i said the same depth of flavor it's still quite tasty, and I think, as you said, the the beer is doing an excellent job of of um, really making the notes in the cigar stand out. Uh, I'm enjoying the cigar a lot more now that I've moved on to my second beer. I'm getting just a ton of of uh, a nutty, like um, mm -hmm. almost a toasted nuttiness with vanilla, and it's it's very thick. I'm actually finding myself constantly reaching for my beer to sort of clean my palate between draws because. Um, like my tongue is almost coated with this vanilla nuttiness, which is good, but I wanna I wanna refresh my palate, so I'm taking you know like you said a big gulp of beer. The effervescence cleans my palate. I go for another draw of the cigar, and it's happening naturally. Like it's just it's just how it's going. Yeah, the <clears throat> the blending of this cigar is kind of perfect for what it is. It, it, is this a cigar that I'm gonna sit down and you know take copious notes on and write pages and pages of uh, flavor notes that I'm picking up on, no, and that's not what it's supposed to be. Um, it's it's meant to be paired with these beers that, like you said, it's it, it does get the flavors are thicker, and in a way you're not getting those thick flavors from the beer, so they they complement each other very nicely. Um, I, I I'm, I'm going to keep going back to this Hofbrau, and we'll see what happens with my next beer. But that that uh, that citrus note that I was getting from that beer was really really nice with the cigar, that sweetness combined with the citrus. There's absolutely no spice, and you're not going to get any of that. Um, but, yeah, that vanillity, vanillity, vanilla, nutty, uh, <laughs> vanillity. Vanillity. I actually kind of like that. It's vanillity. Um, it's kind of a nougat kind of flavor to it, and I really, really like that. It's very sweet, um, but it is a little bit heavy. So the, the lightness of these beers, even though I, I already talked about how heavy the beer feels in your mouth, but the lightness of the flavor in these beers really does play well. So getting back to the uh, German purity law, the German beer law, so some of the, some of the components of that is German law states that uh, vice beers have to be top fermented, so we talked a little bit about that. That's, that's just that's part of their rule. The, the, the German uh, law, and I'm going to butcher this, I apologize to our German listeners, it's Reinheitsgebot, and it's uh, German beer purity law or Bavarian purity law. And it states that only in the the only ingredients that are allowed are water, barley, and hops. That that's that's what you're allowed. Wow. Um, so all beer that's labeled Weiss beer or Weizen beer must be made with at least 50% malted wheat. So in a lot of cases, uh, Bavarian Weiss beers are going to be higher than that, 67%. And that might s seem strange to some people listening, but we've talked about similar rules, and we're talking about Scotch whiskey, or we're talking about mm -hmm. bourbon, um, in order to protect. A, a cultural tradition of brewing or distilling, they create these laws to make sure the product is consistent and it's it's an industry standard. And I think that's a good thing. I don't, you know, none of this is surprising to me at all. Um, this rule goes back a long ways. It goes back to 1487. Now, what's interesting is that the Reinheitsgebot was introduced to prevent price competition with bakers for wheat and rye. So you think about the 1400s and you think about you know, maybe a distillery or a brewery, pardon me, wanting to use rye instead of wheat because maybe it's cheaper, they're going to drive the price of, of uh, bread up. So instead they say, no, you actually have to use wheat. And as a result, people can still get bread. It's still affordable. It kind of makes sense. So obviously a tradition that goes back, gosh, 600 years, almost 600 years, 550 years. That's, I mean, that's amazing. It's a long, long time ago. Um, we talked a little bit about bottle conditioning. Um, so, I mean, it's interesting that, to me, that a brewing tradition in, you know, Bavaria and Germany goes back to predate distillation of some of the spirits we've talked about in previous shows. Like, this is, this is a tradition that goes back a very, very long time. Yeah, I'm, uh, <clears throat> sorry, I kind of zoned out there because just, I'm just kind of enjoying it. Um, yeah, that is a long tradition. That's twice as old as our country. Well, my country. Because uh, we're in different countries. But, yeah, our, uh, country, our country's a baby. It's yeah, it's, just, it's crazy. Baby. It's crazy when you think about it in terms like that. The the German purity beer law has been around longer. 
been around twice as long as the United States. That's kind of amazing. Yeah. Um, See, the Germans do not mess around. I mean, they know they have a national product. They know they're known for it. I mean, you know, we, I'm sure we could feature a hundred different German beers on the show if we wanted to, because that's a, that's a natural tradition, national tradition for them. Um, and you know, they own it. I'd love to go over there for Oktoberfest someday. Hell yeah! I, I don't know. I, I think I may have missed my window of being physically able to handle it, but I still think it'd be fun. Yeah, I could be totally down with that. So just a reminder to our live listeners, you are listening to CigarFederation.com's Sharing Our Pairings, Episode 24, Smoking Monk of Esteli, Half of Eisen, sponsored by Cigar.com. We're pairing some Half of Eisen, our vice beers, with the Smoking Monk of Esteli, Half of Eisen Cigar. If you haven't already, check out Cigar.com. they got a killer sample, a five-pack sample for $29.99. That's a good deal. If, you, if you're not sure which cigar you want to go deep on yet, or maybe you're not sure whether you're going to enjoy them, Twenty-nine bucks is is cheap, man. I mean, that's that's nothing for cigars. Pick it up, try it out, follow along in our shows. Thanks very much for our podcast listeners. We go, we know you guys are out there in droves. And uh, tune in next week. I'm gonna have a bit of a giveaway. We're gonna we're gonna be giving some tasty tasty stuff away to our listeners. Gonna empty the coffers a little bit, huh? No it out. <clears throat> um, just w- real quick note on that sampler pack. Um, if you go to CigarFederation.com and you click on the Sharing Our Pairings page, there's a link there that'll take you to uh, to a special deal. It's the, that's the special pricing that you get. It's through, it's it's a deal that's made specifically for uh, listeners of our show. Excuse me. Robbie Rass hooking up our yeah. listeners. Come on. So yeah, it, it's if you get it through there, it's twenty nine ninety nine and it's free shipping. So I think and I think it's free shipping on everything uh, in your order. So. Um, oh. You can't really beat that, and you can't. I mean, thirty bucks. You can't not do that. And if you like beer, which I mean, you're watching this because you like beer. If you don't like beer, I don't know why you're watching. But we appreciate it. Um, it's this is just fun. Excuse me, I keep belching. I apologize. Um, hopefully it's that doesn't. Yeah, there's a there's a lot going on here. Um, so yeah, it's just, it's just fun. I mean, doing something like this, get one and get one for your buddy, and then just kind of hang out and have a Saturday where you're gonna. Start out with the Hefeweizen, and then maybe go to the IPA after that. I'm have a few beers with each one. That makes for a fun afternoon. So uh, definitely worth trying out. And <clears throat> I think we're we ready for our last beer. Yeah, I think we should do it. I just I just poured it to get it started, and uh, just to, just to show people just how effervescent <laughs> this. Like, look at that. That's I don't even. Someone in Germany is rolling their eyes at me. They're like, "You crazy Canadian! You don't know how to pose a beer. I need to fly over there and show you. You, you don't know what you're doing." And it's true. I don't know. I, I don't know if I'm pouring it correctly. I'm just going based on what I was told from all the other beers, and um, I'll just let it settle and maybe give you a chance to talk about your third beer while I'm doing that. All right, let's let's do it. I'll jump in. This one is the Paul 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 Honor. Is that how you'd say that? Paul Enner, yeah. Paul, Paul Enner? Or Paul, Paul Enner. Paul Enner, whatever, right in the middle there. Uh, and, as if, I'm, ex- as if it, I'm an expert on German. To uh, to jump back here, the the Erdinger is was established in 1516. The Hofbrau Munich, or München, uh, was 1589. And uh, the Paul Enner München is... 1634. So this one's a baby. It's only what? I don't know. 400 years old. Only. Little, oh, 300 and something. Um, anyway, 5.5 percent alcohol by volume. Their website's actually pretty cool. It's got. Um, <clears throat> if you go and look at it, as you scroll down, there's like some 3D uh, hops and barley kind of flying through the side of your screen. There. Uh, they they show you how to uh, how to prost. How to you know to uh, the pouring ritual and how to to clean, to clean glasses and all that. Uh, the original gravity is 12.5 percent, um, or whatever it was, 12.5 degrees or whatever the hell that is that we talked about before. 5.5 um, percent alcohol by volume. Uh, natural cloudy beer. It's the brewery's best-selling product. Uh, top fermented yeast, given an unmistakable character. Uh, sparklingly mild and fruity with delicate yeast flavor. Uh, the eye is immediately gl- drawn to the gleaming orange color. And this was why I left this one for last. And again, I don't know how well that translates, but this is definitely orange. Um, 
it's uh, kind of a golden brownish orange, uh, you know, like the color of like a hayfield or something. If I could wax poetic for a moment, um, it definitely has a darker uh, a darker color to it. Uh, let's see, if there's any other? And this is from uh, it's in Munich, uh, the Bavarian purity Bavarian purity laws. It follows those. Um, that's about all I got. And oh, best before May of 2015. So we got in just in time with this one. Snuck her uh, in. Yeah. And that's that's where I am with that. I'm just gonna go ahead and give it a taste. All right. While you're doing that, I'm gonna talk about my beer, which is the Koning Ludwig Weiss beer from Warsteiner. Uh, I didn't even need to go shopping for this. This was in my beer fridge because I love it. It's so tasty. <laughs> like I kid you not. I like I just I love ice beers in the summertime. Um, I wish it was summer. It's, we're getting some pretty good weather here, but you can see that um, it's again it's very um, it's not dark, but it's very cloudy. <clears throat> You're not going to be able to look through this. It's very effervescent. I mean, you can see there. I mean, there's just tons and tons of effervescence there. Um, Vorsteiner was founded in 1753 in Arnsprig Forest Nature Park outside of Vorstein, North Rhine, Westphalia, Germany. <laughs> Again, I apologize to our German listeners for my pronunciation. I'm sure it's quite terrible. Uh, it is the largest privately owned German brewery, so that's kind of cool. It is the number four among best-selling breweries in Germany, or so they say. Originally founded in 1753, but burned down in 1802, so they rebuilt it. Uh, they got the award world awarded the World Beer Award for that's clumsy. They got the World Beer Award for best wheat beer in 2008. So I mean that seems like a big thing, but I mean maybe there's two beers. I'm just kidding. I'm sure there's a hundred beers. It's 5.5% uh, ABV, and it's very it's interesting because we're we're talking about beers that are made in the same style. I've only gone through three beers, but each of these three beers has a different flavor profile. The second beer um, was more, like I said, it was like beer um, bread in a glass, and the Koning Ludwig for me has characters of that, but also has this this orange peel, like the citrusy character to it. It's it's extremely tasty. Yeah, <clears throat> you know it's funny. I I feel like our beers have kind of gone on the same trajectory, flavor trajectory. Totally but again, planet. it's it's yeah, yeah. We we did uh, months of research. Um, the the flavor notes in here, I, I'm getting that citrus again. Um, the it's it's that smooth, creamy profile again. Pairs really really nicely with the cigar. All three of these have paired really nicely. Um, <clears throat> I think I, I got a little bit turned on to the to the original off brow that I had first. So these others have have had uh, kind of an uphill battle. Um, the the polliner has that I'm getting that weird little uh, banana flavor at the beginning and I really like that um, I, I I'm a big fan of banana uh, desserts um, banana cream pie things like that um, while this doesn't taste like that it's just it's it's just it's almost kind of a subtle banana note it's right there up front and then it it, it, it kind of leaves off to some orange citrus notes after that. Um, a little bit of that, that. It's a wheat, weedy kind of flavor. It's not necessarily yeasty, uh, but it's got like just a, a bit of a wheat flavor towards the end, which makes sense. Um, clean, crisp finish. Just pairs. They both. They just all pair really nicely. Yeah. I, I feel like the 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 cigar has held up to all three. Obviously, because all beers are very, beers are very similar. Um, but I, I'm really enjoying the aroma of the cigar. Um, it's the kind of thing that if I had a bunch of people over. And we're all hanging out in the yard, we're barbecuing, and I wouldn't feel bad being the only guy smoking a cigar because this one doesn't stink. It smells pretty good. So, um, yeah, it's I'm really enjoying all of these, all, all of these pairings. I, I don't, I guess I would go with the Hofbrau Munich as my favorite, um, <clears throat> but I, I wouldn't turn any of them down. And and I gotta I gotta say that I'm now that I'm on the uh, Koning Ludwig, I'm. Really wishing I had some bratwurst and some, <laughs> yeah. like some some pork ribs. I mean, I'm just for whatever reason, I think what would round out this pairing for me is just this the nights a nice sweet barbecued meat would just round out this pairing perfectly. And normally the the favorite pairing of the night is pretty easy for me, but t tonight I'm actually finding a really tough time picking my favorite because each of them pair in their sort of unique way. 
Pause there so I didn't have to burp in you guys' ear. These, these are very, very, <laughs> very effervescent beers. Um, but it's very tough to pick a favorite because each of these beers has its own character, and I find each of them are apparent. Like, next to the IPA show, I'd say that the IPA show is probably still my favorite. But I would say in terms of how the beers are pairing, I don't think we've had a show yet where I found the beers paired as well with the cigar as they have tonight because each of these beers in their own right paired brilliantly. Absolutely. Um, I've been saying absolutely a lot because I feel like I agree with you a lot tonight. Uh, the, stop that right away. Yeah. Um, it's the first sign that the ship's going down. Um, the IPA show blew me away. I wasn't anticip. I had such low expectations, and sometimes I wonder if my reaction was expectation driven. Um, <clears throat> I wonder if I do that with movies sometimes, where like that movie Gravity, with uh, what's her name, where she's just floating around in space. Sandra Bullock. Yeah, I, I I didn't even want to see the movie, but my wife always makes me. We always go do the. Uh, we're gonna watch all the movies that are nominated for everything, and and it, I had no expectation. I didn't want to see it. And uh, I don't know if we watched it in 3D or not, but it ended up being my fav- one of my favorites of the bunch because it was a really good movie, but I had such low expectations, so I wonder if that show was, was the same way. Um, I don't know. Vi- visually, that movie, and just getting way off topic here, but <clears throat> I'm a huge movie buff, and i got to say Gravity visually was absolutely stunning. The, mm, the mm-hmm. stuff that is being done in modern-day cinema, you show- if you showed it to somebody even, say, 20 years ago, their minds would be blown. They would have assumed that you'd taken a group of astronauts, or in this case, actors, taken them into space, and actually filmed this thing in space. <coughs> Anyways, moving right along, because uh, talking about movies is not what we're here to talk about. We're talking about pairings, and I'm doing my best to cover for my... Host, yeah, no, I, I had a little bit of a, a wrong type scenario right there. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, yeah, no, that's... Uh, we can talk all about movies. we we'll get into that later. Uh, and actually, I just finished watching something on HBO that I want to talk to you about as soon as we're Thanks. done here. Um, <clears throat> yeah, these... I, I came in... What, what I was going to get at before I started choking on myself was I, uh, I came into this show with higher expectations because of how good the IPA show was. Now, are Hefeweizen's and IPA's similar? No. They're very different. But I figured if they could make a beer that could pair with an IPA that to me seems like the most difficult thing in the world to do coming from the side of a cigar smoker, um, then there's it would, it's got to be a piece of cake for them to blend something to go with the Hefeweizen. And I really do think, man, that they nailed it. And it's it's really kind of funny. Going into this, you know, we uh, show sponsored by Cigar.com, like we've said, and they were nice enough to send us some samples uh, so we could do these shows and do some reviews and things. <clears throat> I thought, you know, I, I might track down more of the Stout and the Porter before I did the show at all, before I smoked any of them, thinking that I would want to do that again in the future. And to be honest, coming out of this, the ones that I want to buy again are the IPA and now the Hefeweizen. Yep. These are the two that I want to get, and it's so opposite of what I anticipated uh, that it, it does, uh, it shocks me a little bit. But this is just, it's just good. Like, I, I don't know, I feel like we've just kind of said the same thing over and over again for the last 45 minutes. But to me, that just says how good it is. I, there's not much else to say about it. Just that should be the, that should be the tagline of the packaging. It should be "Smoking Munga Vesely Half of Ison." It's just good. Mm. It's just good. It's just it's just good. The cigars. I mean, if you go into it and you understand that there's going to be some flavoring in there, there's going to be and whatever you want to call it, if it's if it's infused or if it's got some pipe tobacco, whatever. There's a little bit of it in there, so you're going to notice that. And if you're prepared for it, and you're uh, you want it, you're going to embrace that. Then I think you'll really enjoy it. If you like. Hefeweizen, then I think this is an absolute no-brainer. I agree. Yeah, and and <clears throat> I think, you know, some people are afraid to move out of, maybe afraid is the wrong word, some people don't want to move out of a, a particular segment of, of smoking, maybe they're stuck with a particular brand, and you know what, have at her. But if you're looking to broaden your horizons and challenge your palate, I think this is one of those experiments which would be a lot of fun because you can take a cigar that you wouldn't, maybe typically smoke, pair with something you wouldn't typically pair with, and it's a great way to build your palate, it's a great way to challenge your palate and, and try and find more flavors that you otherwise wouldn't um, wouldn't pick up. And I mean, part of the reason that we do reviews is because we get to review a lot of different stuff out there and challenge, constantly challenge her palate and try new stuff, 
and in a couple weeks we'll get into that a little bit more with some of the whiskeys we're doing. But you know, in terms of beer pairing, I never would have thought to do a, a vice beer with any kind of cigar because in my mind a vice beer would have just been way too light. It's just you know too simple in my mind. Um, but again, the sort of vanilla cherry nuttiness of this um, this uh, heifer vice in from from Drew Estate is. I mean, it's just, it's it's easy. You could see yourself sitting on a patio, having a couple vice beers, smoking one or maybe even two of these cigars, and just just chilling out and, like Rob was saying, listening to the game. Like, this is, this is the absolute perfect summertime activity. One thing I will say is, having gone through, these are, there's, it's, and I actually looked on the site here, so I can tell you exactly how big these are. They're 16.9 ounces. Um... So, I mean, that doesn't sound right. Anyway, yeah, 16.9, that's right, because a pint, okay. Duh. It's a pint. Um, <clears throat> they come in pints. <laughs> they comes in pints? I'm getting one. Um, so I've gone through three of these, about half of each, um, and I, I definitely feel kind of full. Yeah, absolutely. And it's but not because the beer is heavy. It's yeah. it's that effervescence and that's that's why I, it's it's almost like in uh, what's the uh, the the movie with the crazy candy guy Willy Wonka Willy Wonka's right. chocolate factory yeah. when, they, when they're they're floating up at the end and they have to keep burping to get the it's like that like you kind of feel like you're just gonna keep like I could keep I could belch the alphabet right now if I needed to, to yeah. save my life I've never done it but I think I could um, so prepare yourself for that. Because they are a little bit filling. Yeah, there's no way you're slamming a, a six pack of these bad boys. Like I'm, I think that's that's an accurate description. Is that my belly is full? I feel very satiated by my beer experience. I don't feel like I'm going to go back in the house and crack another beer. I feel like my my beer need has been satisfied. I mean, I'm I'm only halfway down this small pouring that I've done, and uh, my my you know this is. I don't know. I'm, actually, I, I I was looking up because you were talking about calories before, and I forgot to mention on the uh, the uh, Vahev Stefaner. That's terrible. It's uh, 200 kilocalories per 0.5 liters, which is, you know, it's about right. But <clears throat> we were drinking some stouts that were 180 calories for an entire uh, glass. So, you know, these are not these are not. Th- they look like light beers. They're not light beers. These, <laughs> these have some calorie denseness to them, and when you drink one of these, you're going to feel full. Your belly's going to feel full. You're not going to be feeling like you can just have another two, three beers. Yeah, it's... Uh, <clears throat> I, I, um, yeah, I, I can definitely... I'm feeling it. I'm feeling, uh, feeling quite stuffed. Mm-hmm. Uh, I still have the rest of these beers to drink, and uh, I will be drinking them, but... Um, just keep that in mind when you're doing a pairing, maybe one or two of them, and you're probably good to go at that. So <clears throat> for our listeners out there, we got some interesting stuff coming up later in the week, and by later in the week, I mean tomorrow. And <laughs> we know that you guys love Cigar Chat. We appreciate you love Cigar Chat. We've got Jason Wood from Miami Cigar Company coming on tomorrow. That's Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Make sure to get your questions in because you never know what the guys are going to do on the show. They give away crazy amounts of stuff. And, Frankly, we appreciate the questions because at heart we're lazy and we're tired of coming up with interesting stuff on our own. So we appreciate our I mean, no, we appreciate our audience um, asking questions because I think for the manufacturers, I think they probably get a little tired of some of the canned questions that we ask. And it's interesting to see things from the perspective of our audience and our fed heads out there. I know that they really appreciate the questions, and it's more more than once that we've heard a response from the manufacturers who've said, that's a question I've never been asked before. So if you have a chance, head over to the Q&A page, uh, pop that question in there. You never know, you might win something, but at the very least, your question will get asked, and they'll get an interesting response, I'm sure. Um, we actually have, <clears throat> uh, like you said, uh, Jason Wood coming on the show tomorrow, the first time we've had him on, uh, so that'll be fun. But uh, Logan received the prizes today or yesterday, uh, we've got a, a Mazo of the they're all the Nestor Miranda collection. So we've got a Mazo of the Connecticut, a Mazo of the Habano, and of the the uh, Maduro. We've got three T-shirts, and we've also got, which is very fitting to uh, to this show, we've got six. I think there's it's either four or six of the uh, Nestor Miranda collection One Life, which is kind of their slogan, uh, rocks glasses that we're going to be giving nice. away. So, 
So for those of you guys who uh, who enjoy the rocks glasses and what you pour into those rocks glasses, uh, we've got some of those up for grabs as well. So like John said, definitely get over there, post your question, um, and come check out the show tomorrow, which is uh, Thursday, March 19th uh, at 8 p.m. Eastern. And for those who aren't aware, I'm actually uh, I'm actually a huge fan of Nesta Miranda. I've actually got several boxes of their uh, limited editions going back to uh, I think even to 2011, and uh, they are delicious and tasty, and uh, big fan. So make sure to check it out. Next week we're gonna have uh, Pipe Dummies at a regular time, Wednesday 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're not quite sure at this point. We might actually throw a curveball because we make our own rules here on sharing our pairings. So we might have uh, sharing our pairings on Thursday of next week instead of two weeks from now. So stay tuned. Check out our event page. We'll be sure to announce that and be sure to put the link on our Google Plus page. So check it out. Appreciate it. Yeah, we might have a surprise episode. That could be fun. Real quick, before we go, have you heard of or have you watched the... uh, the documentary series on HBO called The Jinx about Robert Durst. I have not. Are you familiar with who Robert Durst is? I want to. I want to say that the name sounds familiar, but He's I could the, just be thinking of Fred guy, Durst. Yeah, not the guy from Limp Bizkit. Then no, I have no idea who who he is. Okay, don't Google him. And I'm talking to everybody. If you haven't watched this, don't search anything about it because there's spoilers. And what happens at the end of this series? It's a six-part series. And they're all about 45 minutes apiece. It is so compelling. But what happens at the end will completely blow you away if you don't know it's going to happen. And this and, is on uh, Netflix? It's on HBO. HBO. Uh, so I, I know that uh, a lot of the HBO stuff, if you don't get HBO, a lot of it goes on um, uh, Amazon Prime. I don't know if this is there yet because it just finished earlier this week. Um, it was a six-part uh, six documentary. And uh, if you've ever seen the movie All Good Things with Ryan Gosling... I'd never seen it. Have you seen that? Yeah, my uh, girlfriend happens to be madly in love with Ryan Gosling, and if well, I wasn't in the picture, she would leave me for Ryan Gosling. Well, I'm sure she she could she could get in line. Yeah, he's <laughs> he, he has no shortage of shortage of suitors. I'm sure. Um, hey, girl. But uh, that that movie is about Robert Durst. How the, the because the wife goes missing. So just a, a, a little just a little background on this guy. He is from the Durst, the New York Durst family, which is like one of the top five uh, real estate families in New York. And uh, I believe that they they have the real, they built the uh, Freedom Tower, um, and um, among other things. And so billionaire, this guy's born into billions, and <clears throat> he gets married, and uh, and in like early '80s, like '82, his wife goes missing, and they never found her, never found her. And um, so th- he was kind of getting attacked for this. Like, did he kill her? Did he not? What happened? And so one of his friends from L.A. comes out to be kind of his spokesperson. It's a, a woman that he met when he was at UCLA. And, you know, a few years later, she ends up murdered um, uh, execution style in her home. And But it, she, her father had, like, mob ties, so there's a little bit of, of, of innuendo there. And then, at one point, this guy, Robert Durst, goes on the run. He kind of just tries to avoid everything. He leaves New York. He goes to Texas. He decides to shave his head and pose as a mute woman. Shaves his head, puts on a wig, and and lives as a mute woman. Ends up befriending this guy who lives next door to him and basically murders the guy who lives next door to him and dismembers him and gets caught and somehow doesn't go to jail. The story is unbelievable. Wow, but it's true. So you, you you've got if you if you're interested in true crime at all, or if you ever watch like you ever find yourself watching um, Dateline or Unsolved Mysteries back in the day. It's, yeah, I love that stuff. Oh, you, you got to watch it. Put everything down. Take your beers inside and go fire it up on TV because it is like my wife and I couldn't watch it fast enough. It, nice. we, it took us two days because it's 45 minutes per episode, so we didn't sit there for six hours, but. Absolutely phenomenal. You've got to watch it. And if you don't know anything about it, don't Google it. Just go watch it. Well, on that note, since we're completely off topic, and that means that's the end of our Sharing Our Pairing (laughs) segment. Thanks so much again for our live listeners. Thanks again for our podcast listeners for tuning in. We're really, we know you guys are out there. Like I said, we're going to have some uh, giveaways either next Thursday or the following Wednesday. We'll make sure to let you know on our CigarFederation.com website. Make sure to check it out. 
as we yeah. always say, make sure to drink better and drink less. Thanks for tuning in.